Every year, roller coaster designs are becoming more unique, daring, and pushing the limits of what can be achieved on an attraction. But that also means that the classics are becoming more rare and special. Parks are trying to outdo one another and build coasters that will wow a guest and work to have a ride become their favorite, one that they're going to come back to for years to come. Nowadays, the mix of elements, G-forces, the theming, trains and restraints, and more have riders praising different rides and manufacturers for different reasons, and coaster enthusiasts are getting more and more critical. My name's Austin, and over the past year, I've rewritten over half of my previous top 25 coasters, giving me a fresh feel at how these rides are currently running. I've also been fortunate enough to ride some of the best new coasters this year, and as of now, I've been on 925 different roller coasters. I'm not sure that's something to be proud of, but these are the 25 coasters I would want in my backyard if I could have any. I believe these coasters are the best at what they do, so two similar coasters are not going to be on this list. It gives us a big mix of ride models, the best of the best. So instead of a more traditional list, this is more of a list of what 25 coasters I would have in my home park if I could have any. And some things that might matter to some might not matter to me. Um, I really enjoy negative G-forces. I'm not a massive fan of sustained positive G-forces. Some restraints bother me because I'm tall while they might be just fine for others. I also judge how the ride looks off-ride or when walking up to it. What's that hype level like? And of course the overall theming you experience while on or off the ride, these all matter to me. Even the operations and employees really affect the outcome of a personal ride experience. So this list will differ from yours, but that's half of the fun. So let's get to it at number 25. We are Starting out with a really good one here, as all the coasters in this list are going to be. Can we just appreciate the fact that this thing was even built? A now defunct manufacturer, Aerodynamics, they were always trying to outdo everybody else and really just raise the extreme level of their rides, make them more fun, more insane. And this ride was way ahead of its time. It's X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Really a love-hate for me here, actually. It's genuinely a terrifying ride, and there's nothing like it unless you go to the other side of the world. The spinning seats really do work to disorient you, and the restraints are a bit claustrophobic, but what's so good about them is they really hold your upper body in while the lower half of your body is very free uh, movement from the waist down and that's why this is so terrifying and terrifyingly awesome. There's a lot of rides out there that really hold your legs in and give you that upper body freedom of movement but this one's just totally the opposite. It kind of just leaves your legs at the mercy of this ride and that's great. A classic Morgan manufactured hyper. Gotta have a hyper classic steel coaster on the list. And this one really doesn't disappoint. Superman El Ultimo Escape at Six Flags Mexico. Coat hanger like shaped hills with the funny transitions from negative G's to positive G's. It has a really fun pre lift through the woods and really great restraints that give some awesome airtime. Ride is long, and for what it is, there's hard to say anything bad about it. That is Der Sound des Karnen. Yes, if you know what I mean and you know that soundtrack, you know why this is in my top 25. Theme parks are all about immersion and nothing comes close to a full coaster experience over Karnen at Hansa Park in Germany. An unbelievable queue, a great storyline, great execution, even the loose article bins are made to be part of this storyline. And this is why soundtracks and presentation is so important in parks. Many theme parks, especially in the USA, can really take note from this coaster and tying everything together into an experience is just unbelievable. The five senses are a major player in core memories and nothing really comes close to Karnan. I won't talk too much about this ride itself because it's better to just go in blind only knowing the soundtrack at most and the layout really isn't what puts it in the top 25, it's the full package. 
This ride once held the record for the steepest drop, but it's about way more than that. The elevator lift is unique, the layout is long, and it has moments that are unlike any other rides. It is a smooth coaster and it features both strong negative G's and positive G's. Cannibal at Lagoon really is just a package of everything. The restraints are comfortable and the element dubbed the Lagoon Roll is just hilarious fun. I'm a little surprised more people don't talk about this ride, but it is hard to get to, so it's understandable. An Intamin airtime machine with a hill-focused layout and those old generation Intamin trains. This one goes to Expedition G-Force Holiday Park in Germany. Great airtime moments, an awesome first drop. Weird shaping that isn't straight force vector design. You'll actually find a lot of Intamins on my list because they use FVD design less than others. It really does make their rides excellent. And if they ever move towards FVD only, everything great from their designs will suffer. This FVD design is really based around forces instead of just looking at something and seeing if it will work. And looking at the current Vacoma center line, which is really all FVD, in my opinion, it's a reason many enthusiasts are a bit bummed when they ride these newer Vacomas. They all feel very similar with every roll and turn just too perfectly forced out. Everything just feels so computerized that they become a little boring. Back to Expedition G-Force. It's great. Delivers in fun with great forces. Really good layout, really good ride. From those old generation Intamin trains, we also can't forget about those older generation Intamin LSM launch coasters. And this one is here for the great top hat, the awesome turns and transitions, and the speedy inversions. It's I speed in this spot at Mirabilandia, Italy. Really one of the best flowing rides out there. Every element hits so perfectly. The ride is extremely fun. And again, there's not much wrong with it. I wish I was shorter in height so that the restraints were more comfortable on me. But other than that, there's really nothing too wrong with this coaster. The first Woody on the list, it's Legend from Holiday World in Indiana, a water park heavy amusement park with three of the top wooden coasters in the world. It's not my favorite park, and this is the only coaster from Holiday World on my list. The Legend is fun and probably has some of the most famous lateral g-forces in the world. It's ran better than the Voyage this year in my opinion, and I really need a great night ride on this list, and this is definitely it. I had way more fun riding this back to back than I did the Voyage, and I believe that Custom Coasters International will always be my favorite wooden coaster manufacturer, and it's really unfortunate that we might not see that CCI style of layout be built again. Airtime prevails over out of control laterals for me. It's still the nostalgic feeling and the comfortable seats and restraints that put it on the list. There's not much bad to say about it. It's just good fun. PTC will always be my favorite train manufacturer for wooden coasters. And this coaster is one that shows off their trains the best. Just your classic double out and back layout with a lot of airtime and some lateral turns on each end. Three woodies in a row. If you're expecting a crazy amount of wild forces for this next ride, like other Rocky Mountain construction coasters, don't. This ride is ranked so highly for me because I didn't think it felt like all the other RMCs. Wildfire at Kolmarden in Sweden. An amazing stall, a layout through the woods, through cliffs, and with a beautiful water view from many of the elements. It has to be one of the best settings for a ride period. The ride features some slower moments that are easy to complain about, but it also makes the ride unique from seat to seat. And it has a lot of talking points. Don't expect the intensity of Iron Gwazi from this ride. Just expect one of the best wooden coasters in the world. It's also very well taken care of. It's definitely the smoothest of all the RMC topper track woodies out there right now. Really just a fun and yeah, good ride. 
It's the New Age Mega Coaster from Intamin, and it takes the out and back layout and puts a little spin on it, adding a bit of a twister section in the middle of the ride with some turns and overbanks, and then sending it back towards the station with more airtime. This type of ride could be a number one coaster in the future, but being the first of this style from Intamin, I think the layout could be more inspiring, or honestly, less inspiring. Just do what's proven more airtime, more huge elements, and lots of speed. Still one of my favorites. Lie at Fantasialand in Germany is likely the best themed coaster in the world, and that's why it's in my top 25. It also feels just like top-notch quality when you sit in the trains. You're feeling like you're getting into a Lamborghini. Just really an incredible ride with a layout that's hard to follow, elements that are comfortable for the flying position that you're prone to ride in, and just elegant. This ride is elegant. I just need a speed machine on the list and the first half of this ride gets it done. It's too bad the second half is such a very average B&M, otherwise this thing is one of the best coasters in the world. Of course I'm going to say that a lot while going through this list, but really it's true. Zoom. The world's tallest coaster, the hydraulic launch, the speed, the massive top hat. It's a short ride, but damn it is sweet. It's King to Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure. I think this next coaster model has the opportunity to become the best in the world again, but it falls short because of the jackhammering. One of the best ride types ever, this spinning coaster from Mock Rides, is one of the craziest experiences out there. Ride to Happiness at Plopsa Land in Belgium. I'm not sure if it's the heavy trains or the track type, but you are at the mercy of this ride. This thing can give great rides, but it can also give some pretty damn rough rides. It is intense. The layout also just has its shortcomings. It's got some excellent and really unique elements, but it also has a bunch of elements and turns that just get you to the next part of the ride. Like they couldn't figure out what to do or how to get you to the second launch. So they just kind of put a boring S turn air hill. And that's why it's sitting here outside of my top 10. The B&M Hyper, one of my favorite coaster models, and why do anything other than a bunch of airtime hills when that's the best part? Goliath at La Ronde is exactly that, and the airtime is pretty damn good too. It's an older Hyper, but it still has great negative Gs, and it's running quite well for its age. Plus, the 9-car trains without that staggered seating seems to provide the best Hyper coaster experience. Goliath at La Ronde is always a good time. There is another new generation Vacoma on this list. It is the most fun roller coaster that I've probably ever done. This hobby is about having fun, right? And this ride is all about a good time. I don't know how you couldn't get off this without smiling. Amazing ride. Hershey Park might have the best roller coaster collection in the world. I know that the restraints are a big complaint here on Skyrush coming in at number nine, but without these restraints that come down on your thighs, the ride could really lose a lot of its terrifying nature. Skyrush is so good because it's just a bit scary while riding. The upper body movement that you're allowed with these high positive G moments are just the right amount of unsettling. You need to fight back to ride Skyrush, and that's what's so great about it. It's exactly what a coaster should be. It's fast, it's got strong G-forces, it's extreme and it's still fun. An amazing ride and it seems to get better with every ride on it. A bit opposite from what everyone else thinks, but I'm pretty sure it's actually the restraints that put this ride so high on my list. It's unlike any other coaster in the world. It's the first LSM launch coaster from manufacturer Intamin. It's short in height, but awesome. Maverick at Cedar Point. There's still no coaster that gives you what Maverick does, and I don't think there ever will be. It's got a great drop, 
really fast transitions, dueling moments when it works, and I really wish they'd fix that problem, and then a crazy launch halfway through the ride. The ride's long and both halves of the ride are fun and they give off a little bit of a different vibe. It's a very balanced coaster, and even though it's intense, it's a comfortable intensity. This next ride is all about the trains, the best roller coaster trains on the market from Intamin. It is Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner, Madrid, Spain. These short and nimble trains, I think three or four car trains make the best rides. So these three car trains are just perfect. New carbon fiber restraint bars, similar to the ones on Falcon Flight that have just been announced. Plus the slight stagger from the seats on the front of the car versus the back of the car. Just a little bit different of a ride from front to back of each car. And the launches as well, they're extremely punchy. These launches feel stronger than possibly any other LSM launch out there. Elements like the wave turns feel strong and pointy versus just the wave turns that you're used to feeling. And I think again, that goes back to the force vector design that I was talking about earlier. This coaster really has its special moments and those little odd quirks and turns and forces that you really remember from the layout instead of it all just blending together. It's not all FVD. It's a very fun and unique layout. The layout could maybe benefit from some quick S turns. And it also feels a little short with just a few elements after each launch, but I really love this ride and it makes me extremely excited for future rides that use these type of trains, these nimble cars and these punchy launches. It really has a means to be a number one coaster in the future. There's not one standout moment on this next one because the whole thing is just total chaos. It's Wonder Woman at Fiesta, Texas. This ride still has me so shocked more than any other coaster once you hit the brakes. It's relentless and each part just brings something different to the circuit. It's an incredible layout and it feels like a massive backyard coaster, which is a good thing. It feels way taller than it is, it feels way faster than it is, and it is just as out of control as it looks. New trains are coming next year, it might change this ride experience, but it also might make it better, so it'll be interesting to head back and ride it again in 2024. It just brings the right amount of scary anticipation and also that out of controlness. I'm not a fan of the McDonald's color scheme, but I can look past it. The trains are heavy and huge. It's another unique Intamin coaster, Hyperion at Energylandia in Poland. This thing has so much power behind it. The layout is your out and back into a twister style layout, probably proven to be the best way to do a layout with this out and back start and then a twister finish. The massive elements at the start are great and then those semi quick transitions in the second half are really felt with these wider vehicles, especially on the edges. And if you're looking for a smoother ride, you can just sit in the center of the seats. And then if you want that out of control ride, you can sit towards the sides. I always just imagine this one with that one slower airtime hill on the return run split into two airtime hills. And really like, again, this is one of the best coasters. The next one on the list, and it's just outside the top three, it's a very talked about Intamin. And among coaster enthusiasts, it's very well known, but maybe not so well known to the general public of the world. It's Taiga at Linnanmaki in Finland. This one is number one in the world material again. Yes, this has also replaced Velocicoaster on my list. I'm definitely spoiled with Velocicoaster as I ride it quite often. And then those six car trains just feel a bit too clunky and just everything is very gray on this ride. Let's talk about Taiga. Really just absolutely incredible layout. It has everything you could want in a layout. There's not much wrong with it. And the nostalgia is immediately there after you ride. It's also got the four car trains that work very well. And you don't have these weird pulls in and out of each element because of this. But I will say there are two elements that are really stopping this from being my number one coaster. And it's the top hat and the Immelman. I think just a little bit of tweaks in the shaping of these two elements and you really do have the best coaster in the world again. It's just small tweaks 
and these coasters are incredible, but of course I'm just nitpicking, but you do kind of lose airtime over this top hat. And then I think if you had a roll point on this Immelman that started earlier and kind of made it like a non-inverting Immelman, then you would again just have an unbeatable ride. Also an awesome soundtrack that I do sometimes just put on in the background. I'm not going home and playing cue music from Velocicoaster. It's also on a hill in a Nordic country. This Swedish coaster doesn't do many things wrong, and it's different enough from everything else to definitely be in my top three. A coaster from Mock Rides. It's a lovely ride experience with one of the best soundtracks in the world again. Helix at Liseberg in Sweden. The layout has almost everything you could want out of a coaster. You have great forces, positive and negatives. There's some lateral forces thrown in that are still comfortable. Two massive air hills that are unbanked. There's some quick transitions through the first half of the ride and the second half of the ride. And there's that setting like no other on the side of the hill with just the view over the city the entire ride. The launches do feel slow, but again, it's kind of hard to complain about that when everything else on the ride is just so, so good. If it was built today, I imagine there'd just be a few elements switched out for some of these newer elements that are on Mox now, but uh, also with some onboard audio of the soundtrack, this would be amazing. It gives awesome night rides. It gives awesome morning rides. It's really long, incredible coaster. I always slightly ranked Iron Gwazi higher than this next RMC, but having ridden both this year quite a few times, I'm giving number two to Zadra at Energylandia. The overall flow in and out of each element on Zadra places it here. This roller coaster really features a bit of everything. You have the unique airtime moment at the start, this awesome stall with the beautiful lift structure, the wild outer bank, straight and huge airtime hill, and the turn into the structure, an amazing zero-g turn, and then that ending that is out of control but not in an annoying way. The ride is non-stop crazy but still comfortable, and it's hard to complain about anything on this ride. The layout's satisfying from above, the theming is lackluster but still epic enough, and the operations are very good. It's the final coaster, number one, and it's still ranked highest for me. It's Terran at Fantasialand in Germany. Near misses everywhere, an incredible pace and flow throughout the ride, airtime on many of the hills where you don't expect it, plus lateral Gs, and the amazing atmosphere with probably my favorite soundtrack. It's the closest thing to perfection yet, and I do believe that one day it'll be beaten, or maybe I will just ride it more often and my mind will be changed. But for now, Terran just gives me goosebumps just when I see the ride. Walking up to it's incredible, and you could argue that it's similar to Taiga, but it is so different from anything else on this list. It doesn't invert. It's all about the turns, and there's still a bunch of airtime, low to ground. It relies on the close proximity to everything around you to enhance the ride experience, and nothing just beats this thing. It's intimidating, yet it's also still a whimsical and a happy place. I don't see anything wrong with this coaster. I feel all the rides on this list bring something different to the table than all the other coasters in the world. Whether it be the imaginative storytelling or the incredible layouts and elements that are only experienced on these select coasters, they really do what they do best. Here's a little breakdown from my list. This breakdown is kind of interesting because I did try to mix up how the coasters feel, pick a different coaster for every single number. So it really shows me that I do really enjoy Intamin's models. They really do feel different from one another. They build them differently and they make very unique rides. We've got some really exciting new attractions coming next year that will change this list again, I'm sure. And it's always exciting to see what the future will bring in this industry. We have Thor Park getting a new mock. We have Europa Park also getting a new mock. And then we've got Zamperla with Top Thrill 2, probably the coaster that has everyone's eyes on it in the industry. And it's going to be extremely exciting 
to see what these rides do next year to this list and a very exciting time in coasters to see another manufacturer breaking the 120 mile per hour mark. As always, thank you so much for watching this. Let me know what you think of this list below, what I got wrong, what I got right maybe. And until next time, see ya.